Every way to play video games is on a CRT monitor or a CRT TV. Those are two different things. So in this video, I'm going to try to help you decide if a CRT is right for you. And I think there's a really easy way to figure that out. There are so many videos out there with nerdy specs and they, you know, get really, really deep into this. They go down the rabbit hole. Look at how CRTs are very different than our modern new technology. And they talk about all the ways that CRTs are still superior to modern flat screens, including OLEDs. But in this video, I want to focus on what I think the three main things are that can really help you determine whether or not a CRT is for you. Look at that ugly Activate Windows thing. Is this what your Windows 10 looks like? When you try to go and change your color scheme or your background, does it say, oh, sorry, you got to activate. We need this dark theme. And you can go buy a retail CD key if you want to. It's going to cost you over $100 typically, maybe a lot, maybe $150. Uh, and if you're buying an office, it's going to be a lot more than that. Or you can do like I do and grab an OEM CD key. It's the exact same product when you buy an OEM key. It's just this is the price that the big corporations and stuff pay when they buy them and put them on laptops or whatever when they buy them for their offices. So everyone should get the same price and that's why I always buy OEM keys and I do it on whokeys.com. We have Windows 11 and you can also get Office. Pick the version you want. I'm going to get Windows 10 Pro. By using coupon code TS25, you can get 25% off these prices here. So go ahead and put TS25 in here as your coupon code. Hit it apply and then you can see we can get Windows 10 Pro for $14.85. Once you're finished, if you want to access your key, you click on your name on the top right, click on User Center and you'll see My Purchase Orders. Right here, you'll be able to view the keys that you've purchased just by clicking on View Keys and Codes. Then you will see your code right here. Just go ahead and copy this code, press Start, type Activate. And you'll see activation settings come up. Click on that. Then click change product key. Right there you can paste in your code and hit next and then you will be activated. It's very simple. And while you're on Hookies, be sure to check out some of their new stuff like their wireless mice and mechanical keyboards. All right, now to the regularly scheduled video. There are CRT monitors for your computer. and there are CRT television sets, and they are two different animals entirely. They both may be good for you, but we need to talk about the differences before we move on. A CRT television set, it's low resolution and it's not sharp, and this is a good thing. Yeah, it's actually a really good thing when it comes to retro gaming, and I'll talk about that when I get to that part of the video. So television sets, they're usually 240p or 480i, depending on the content. A lot of the old school games would have both of those resolutions even in the same game, but most of the older games are 240p. If you see a television set that's higher resolution than that, don't even mess around with it. Walk away from it. It is not gonna be good for retro gaming. Anything that does more than 480i, nope. It's, it's nope. You may see some like widescreen 720p, 1080i television set. Oh my God, can you believe they made a giant 1080i CRT? Don't touch it. It's gonna try to upscale your content. It's gonna introduce a bunch of input latency and it's gonna feel like a mess and it's not gonna look good. Just stick with the old stuff. That's what it was made for. All right, so that's television sets. Now let's talk about monitors. And before I do that, I want to mention something. I'm gonna cover a lot of the stuff that Linus covered in a recent video. I made this a couple of days ago, this video. I sat here and talked through this whole thing. So after I was finished, I was like, you know what, I'm, I always do this. I like to go and, and look and see if this monitor's still $5,000. It's the Sony GDM FW9000. And I realized that Linus had just made a video on this a couple of months ago. So I was like, oh, I haven't seen Linus this excited in a long time. I've seen maybe some faint excitement for some new products and stuff, but I don't know. It just feels like genuine excitement. So it was cool to see him messing around with the CRT. But, you know, they, they covered in the video the same Twitter channel that I was going to recommend to everybody. They answered a lot of the same questions that I was going to, you know, answer. And they also made a lot of the same points. So I'm going to cover it anyway, but I want to say that you should go and watch that video because that monitor is ridiculous and it's a lot of fun. But I think they missed a few things in their video. And I think they didn't ask a couple of the questions I'm going to ask. And also they used a Titan X in that video to power that card because it's the most powerful card that has a VGA analog output. Linus and friends, this is what you need. You can use any modern graphics card as long as you have this. It introduces zero latency. This is the d 87 uh, 87685. Now this, you plug up DisplayPort on one side, you get VGA on the other side, and then you can hook up your computer monitor, your VGA monitor. It'll show up in your system as the correct thing. You know, I've got one of these. This is a VGA to HDMI. This shows up as HDMI adapter in my, you know, preferences or in my, you know, like display settings. 
this, the VGA monitor shows up correctly. And then you can change the resolution. And on the box, it says it doesn't support more than 1920 by 1080 or whatever. It's a lie. It will support more. It's got enough frequency. It can handle that fancy Sony monitor you have there. So if you want to play it with a new thing, this is what you need right here. And there's a few others that use the same components in different com com uh, countries. I think one of them is IC something, IC doc, I don't know. But I can put those in the description if you're curious. So we talked about TVs. Now let's talk about the difference in computer monitors. Computer monitors have a much sharper picture because they're designed for you to be reading text and stuff like that. So they have a filter in there that helps to make the picture really sharp. And you'll see this represented as dot pitch. The lower the dot pitch, that means the sharper the picture. So if you see like a 0.25 or a 0.24, that's a pretty sharp picture. It means the dots are really out. nice and sharp on your screen, nice, small, pretty dots. Now, a CRT monitor is generally multi-sync, meaning that you can throw lots of different resolutions at it, and it doesn't care. It likes all resolutions. Every resolution is native on a CRT. I don't know if we're ever going to get another monitor like that, like OLEDs, LCD, all that stuff. It's a set number of pixels on the screen. That's what you got. You've got LEDs, you've got OLEDs, you've got pixels on your screen. So if you try to run at a smaller resolution and then stretch it to the full screen, it's going to get weird. There's going to be artifacts. It's going to it's going to look f strange and fuzzy. But a CRT, it's like 1600 by 1200. And then the electron guns inside is like, okay, I'll draw that many lines. And then you're like, how about 1024 by 768? And the electron guns like, cool, I'll draw that many lines. Any resolution is gonna be perfect on a CRT. And that allows you a lot of leeway to play like older games at lower resolutions and stuff like that. And they're gonna look great. Now, the thing is most CRT monitors don't go any lower than 480p. So the old school consoles that are out putting like 240p are not gonna work perfectly. So that's where you need a TV for those and then a monitor for your computer. And that's why they're really two different things. I, I, what the hell is going on? Now let's get to those three things that I think are the most important things you should be asking yourself. Now the first, how important is motion fluidity? Because a CRT does motion fluidity like nothing you've ever seen. And if you haven't used a CRT ever in your life, or you haven't used one in a while, just find one and like turn it on, play a game on it, and you're going to be blown away. Like that's what happened with me. I plugged it in and I was like, why does it feel, why, what's up with this? Why does it feel so good? If you want to go down all the rabbit holes, those links are gonna be in the description. We'll explain to you how the CRT is so damn fast. But really, we can do a quick little shot here with the slow-mo guys. And it shows you how the electron gun builds the image on the screen. Now, it shoots the electron beam through the cathode ray tube, lights up some phosphors on the front of the on the front of the, I guess, your screen. And those phosphors are illuminated for a tiny amount of time. There's basically uh, no time between them being on and off. So that electron gun, this is running at super, super, super slow motion because this electron gun draws this every single frame. And every, if, you know, if you're running like 60 hertz, it draws the entire thing 60 times every second. If you're running at 75 hertz, it'll draw the entire screen, you know, 75 times. That electron gun is so ridiculously fast. And so what that means is every single dot on your screen is getting refreshed every cycle. Now on an LCD, that may not be the case. A lot of times if stuff's similar and all that stuff, it'll just hold those pixels in place. So it sometimes can make things look a little bit flat. And then the other thing is the response from those pixels being turned on and being turned off is not instant like it is on a CRT. And that's where you get like what people call ghosting or motion blur and stuff like that. And even the best LCDs have a little bit of it. And even if you think you can't tell and you're running like a 240 hertz monitor or something, and you go over to a CRT that's running at like 60 hertz, you're like, why does this look more fluid than a 240 hertz LCD? And that's because when those LEDs turn on and off, 
it takes a little bit of time for them to fade out and then fade back in. And so you're seeing a little bit of the residual motion on your screen that you do not see on a CRT. OLEDs are way faster. That technology is getting there, and I think it's going to be there soon. And they also have done some pretty interesting things, like in between each frame, they throw a black frame to sort of clear it out so that it's redrawn. Um, but that makes the screen look darker. And sometimes, for my eyes, I, I feel like I can see flicker, but some people say they can't. Um, but there are technologies and ways to make the OLED look more fluid. And for me, it's about 90% there but it's still not on the same level as a CRT. So if fluidity of motion is a thing for you, then nothing's gonna beat a CRT. I've been playing all these retro stylized uh, FPS games, like I've been playing Proteus and stuff. I've been playing that on my CRT. I've got this big, beautiful Alienware, uh, you know, ultra wide monitor on my desk and it's great. You know, I play a lot of my strategy games and stuff on there. I play sometimes I'll play like an FPS or an RPG or whatever, but I started playing Proteus on that, and then I went over to my other computer, and I was like, it just feels so much better instantly. You know, even running at 144 hertz on my main screen, going over to my, you know, CRT running at 60 hertz, and it feels so much better. It's weird. It feels wrong almost to have this giant old piece of technology that feels so much better, and it looks a lot better too. That's the second question you should be asking yourself. How important is the look on the screen? Because modern computers, modern LCDs, and especially modern OLEDs uh, with HDR and all that stuff, they look good, they're crisp, they're sharp. The CRT does something a little bit better than them still, and that's the combination of having amazing contrast because when those phosphors are not illuminated, you're getting pure black. But the other thing is that with the fluidity of motion, it gives you a real sense of depth as you're moving around. Whereas the flat panels and stuff, since the fluidity of motion is not the same, even with OLEDs, who, you know, they have true black, but they don't feel uh, like they have as much depth. It's really weird, and there is some science behind the reasons why CRTs feel more 3D than the flat panels do. But a lot of that has to do with the combination of those pure darks that are instantly turned off when the phosphor is not being illuminated, pure blacks, and just the speed of the response gives it this nice depth. So that's a computer monitor. Computer CRTs are actually going to look very similar uh, to a regular monitor when it comes to the sharpness because they have this, you know, they, they have to look really good. So when you turn them up to a high resolution, of course, they're not going to be as sharp as like a 4K monitor or something like that because you just have, you got more resolution. And a lot of times, you know, you can run a 4K monitor, a small 4K monitor, and, and then just make your interface bigger, doing the interface scaling or the Windows scaling, or whatever it is, and the text looks super sharp. So yes, a 4K monitor is going to be sharper than any CRT out there. But in games and stuff like that, uh, from my perception, and also I noticed Linus mentioned it in his video, they feel smooth. Like the edges of objects feel and very naturally smooth and almost more 3D. It's it's really weird, but in my opinion, any game, even modern games, look smoother, even without anti-aliasing, smoother and cleaner at the same time because it's like, it looks more natural, I guess is the word. It's maybe not cleaner is the right word, but it looks, it looks more natural on a CRT. Now, is it enough to go and buy a big, huge thing and put it on your desk? Probably not you know, because OLEDs are 90% of the way there, but it does look better to me when I'm playing games. Using the computer, uh, you know, like just using your operating system and stuff, everything looks better to me on an OLED uh, or an IPS panel. It's just sharper and cleaner. If I'm gonna be doing editing and stuff like that or reading text, I wanna use a flat screen monitor. But when I'm gaming, I really do want a CRT. Now let's talk about these blurry television sets and why that's a good thing. Why is it good to have blurrier pictures and lower resolution? Well, the old games were designed with this in mind and they really, really put some artwork into these pixels to make them work with the lower resolution and the fact that each dot has a bit of Gaussian blur around it. So the dots will kind of blur together and the darks will kind of blur together and you'll actually get shading. You know, when a lot of people say, hey, uh, you know, these games, I feel like they look better when I was a kid, but then I load them up now on my computer in the emulator and I'm like, damn, this didn't look as good. It looks really jaggy and 
kind of rough and the colors don't look like this. It doesn't, doesn't look as saturated, it doesn't look as soft. I remember this looking better as a kid, but oh well, you, you know, it's funny how we are. But no, it actually did look better. And there's a Twitter account that I want to recommend called CRT Pixels, where they show you what the raw pixels look like um, on the left, and then they show you how it looks on a, on a television set. So let's go through a few of these here. Well, this is I'll start right here. This is uh, Taxi, Tactics Ogre from the Super Nintendo. This is how you're going to see it when you're playing like an emulator or something like that. See, the text is like really blocky. And, and notice that there is like shading in between here. Like they they did, this would probably not be a good way to do it if you had a, you know, a retro stylized indie game. A modern indie game would probably not put this shading around the edges and stuff. And notice the characters. You know, a lot of the modern indie games look a lot better than this because they are not designed for CRTs. They're designed for modern, modern monitors. But look, there's like little dots in here that are there for shading. So when you go over here, look at that. Those dots that are there for shading and stuff. The artists knew that when you play this on your screen, the dots are going to blur together a little bit and you're going to get this nice shading effect and things look a little bit softer and the edges of things look, look at that, the edge of things looks round. There's not a lot of jaggies there. We're not doing any anti-aliasing. This is just the natural way of low resolution television looks. And then look at the text up here. It's it just it it's there. It looks great. You it's totally readable. All right, let's look at some more here. Now, this is VV Final Fantasy uh, Nine, and this is how it would look on your emulator or on your PC or whatever. If you play the version on your PC, it's going to look like this. You're going to get all the raw pixels. And see again, you can see there's these weird pixels there. It it's kind of strange. But then we look at it on a CRT. This is the photo from the CRT. And now look at Vivi's eyes. They're just like hovering in there. It's beautiful. Look at his hat. Look at the shading on his jacket. It, and, it, and the other thing you have to think about is you're going to be sitting five or six feet back on your couch. So yes, when you were a kid, Final Fantasy IX looked freaking amazing. It looked really cool. It looked like art. You know, it wasn't just it wasn't just the raw pixels. You know, we didn't just we didn't just have this. Our TVs gave us this and it was a beautiful thing. Do a couple more here. This is an NES game um, called The Guardian Legend, and it, lo it looks terrible. But on your screen, you know, it looks pretty cool. I mean, the NES games are very low resolution and stuff, but that just looks goofy. It, it's so much better. And again, each TV is also going to be a little bit different because of the way that the filters will display the dots on the screen and stuff like that. Like a Trinitron is going to have a vertical, uh, you know, vertical dots or vertical, I guess, lines or whatever, uh, whereas a lot of other CRTs are going to have dots. So different CRTs have different characteristics. Let's look at a few portraits because I think these really show um, how the artwork was used. You see the lines there used for the shading and stuff, and then look at it on a CRT. I'll do a couple more. Chun-Li. Nope. Yep. <laughs> so much better. We can, we can sit here all day. Let's do Blaze from Streets of Rage. Yep, so much better. All right, last one. I, that's it. That's the last one. Oh yeah, we'll do. We'll do this one. Let's see the see that jacky nonsense right there on the inside of her thigh. Now look, it's nice, nice and shadowed, and up here on the on the pleats and the skirt and stuff, the headband, uh, everything, everything, the, the the bracers or whatever. Everything looks so much better, like on a CRT. So if that is important to you, you know, really capturing how they look. You can try to emulate some of this stuff with filters on your computer. And I've, I've done a pretty good job of it using RetroArch, just throwing in some CRT filters and trying to fix it up as much as I can to look like what I remember as a kid. I've, I've done an okay job, but I, I can't get it to be exactly like a CRT. I can get it like 70 or 80% of the way there. But the other thing is that the CRT just feels so fluid. What the hell is going on? Okay, let's let's just let's just uh, get into a level here and see. <laughs> get something that has an RGB input, and then get a Nintendo Wii, not a Wii U, not a Switch. Get a Nintendo Wii, hack it up, throw a bunch of ROMs on there, and then. You have a beautiful 240p uh, system that can play Wii games, Super Nintendo games, Genesis games. It can play basically everything, including even the GameCube games. So that's like the one system to play all of the retro games, in my opinion. The Nintendo Wii. 
Now, of course, we've got a Senpai that I use, but it's a HDMI designed to hook up to modern television sets. It's like a fun option, but when you're really serious and you've got a television set, you gotta get a Wii. That's, that's it, you gotta get a Wii and a TV. Right, the third thing that we should talk about is nostalgia because nostalgia and the way you feel about things has a function in my opinion a lot of people are going to just be like no 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 that's just that's not valid that doesn't count there's nothing there but feelings and there's nothing there but a sense of coziness and i say a sense of coziness actually has a function and if you have the room for it and the money for it and you're going to use it and it takes up a spot that connects you with a happy time in your life, then that is valuable. Nostalgia is a thing for a reason. We get really excited when we, when we see things that connect us with a better time of our life or a happy time of our life or a time in our life that just had, I don't know, we had fewer responsibilities. And if, if that, you know, is something that you can spend money on and get a TV and consume, well, that I don't have any problem with that. And I think we really need uh, to see, you know, nostalgia as a function because it clearly is. So ask yourself, is the nostalgia worth it? Is the speed worth it? Do you want the games to look like they did on a CRT? And then you can start to answer some of these questions. In my opinion, uh, a CRT television set for old retro consoles and the Wii is um, just a no brainer. It's the best way to play old games. CRT monitor, kind of maybe. It's like OLED's gonna maybe one day be better or at least good enough that it doesn't matter anymore. But for me, I just have it because I really, really, really like the way it looks. It does matter for me, but it's such a small degree, uh, you know, and it doesn't have the same beautiful blur that you get with a lot of the old school television sets. It's, you know, it's higher resolution, it's sharper. And it's weird that those are negative things, but when it comes to the way the old pixel art was designed, those actually, um, it doesn't really matter for old console games and stuff like that. Even when I play it on my, uh, if I play an old console emulator or something on my CRT monitor, well, I still need to do like the old, uh, like filters and stuff to try to make it look like it's on a CRT TV because those were much blurrier and you know, the games were just, just designed for it. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. <laughs> now don't mess around with me. All right, so I hope you had fun. I'll leave all of this stuff in the description if you want to see like, oh my God, there's no input lag. Like some, some of these videos and stuff where they, where they show you how the CRTs work. Uh, I'll leave these in the description so you can go down the rabbit hole if you want to. If not, hope you had fun hanging out talking about CRTs. Let's put something on sale shall we see these right here beautiful these things top rated better than the competition guaranteed like if it's if it doesn't track as well as the other stuff i'll send you your money back and if you complain a lot i'll send you a bag of chips your choice there we go look at that beautiful beautiful stuff there high quality printing got this from a rubber company beautiful wasp yes from the box straight from or what i guess shenzhen up there love that design and then the Zweihander ones we're almost out of these this is all we've got left for the Zweihander ones Ugh, I don't want to pull it all the way out because it's a pain but uh, there's the cool Zweihander ones so I've got these they're gonna be half price oh, remember this there it is this is far too appropriate right now so we're gonna do the mice and the mouse pads for half price there's one in the wild it's uh, a little dirty from being overly used so the thing about these mice We've set them up with a special firmware that allows you to change the LEDs by holding down buttons on the mouse instead of having to install software. And uh, this has got 3360 sensor. All right, we just woke up the computer. <laughs> well, you're awake now. Oh, thank God you're awake. It's the start of a JRPG. Um, anyway, mice and mouse pads have price right now with coupon code Happy Mice. So go over to epicpants.com and check out their happy mice. I'll leave this for a while as a reward for people who watch the CRT video because you're awesome. You want your mice to be happy when they're on their new mouse pad. So go over to epicpants.com, coupon code happy mice, and uh, we'll see you in the comments.